bots, a scourge in the game since the dawn of time. Silently chopping their logs, leveling their skills, and recently, killing bosses, bots have no doubt played a large part in the history and evolution of RuneScape. The general consensus is that bots are a detriment to both the economy and to gameplay, but is it possible that the game is actually better with them? Ancient alien theorists say yes. Behold, our subject in all of his glory. Today, I want to take a look at botting, and not in an in-depth Sir Pugger type of way, I want to quickly explore the potential positives that botting does have on the RuneScape economy. I've seen many complaints that bots crash the prices of certain items. It's true, it's basic economics. I opened up MS Paint here, I got us a graph. When demand for an item stays the same, but the supply greatly increases, the price for this item is going to decrease as well. Uh, I can show you on the graph really quick here. So here's the current price. Uh, we got price on the side, quantity on the bottom. Price in the middle, this is equilibrium. This is the price that both parties in the Grand Exchange are willing to sell and purchase this item for. If we have a supply shock, meaning uh, that there is a greater number of an item coming into the game due to these bots, here's our S2, I don't want to deal with that. But uh, as you can see, with the greater supply, the increase in supply here, we're actually going to get a lower equilibrium price point, which is, once again, the price on the Grand Exchange which players are willing to buy and sell an item for. So. Is this always a bad thing? Really quick, if you do enjoy this type of content, please subscribe to the channel. I'll keep on pumping out more of it for you. Uh, drop a like, both things are free and they're greatly appreciated. There are a myriad of activities and tasks in this game that bot farms automate that are simply not worth doing. Take gathering red spider's eggs. This one was always super tilting to me on my Iron Man because every single world was covered for the looting bag method. Luckily, I quickly found that you can kill Spideens for much faster eggs on your Iron Man, but us mains benefit from the decreased price on these resources. Cheaper eggs means cheaper super restores, which means a higher ROI from PVM, an activity that's more fun and engaging than collecting resources. Just looking at the GE tracker for red spider's eggs for the last quarter, it's pretty obvious that there was a large bot farm dump. Uh, red spider's eggs peaked right here. Here at 576 and it looks like the valley was at 383 for the buying offer that is a 193 gp difference per egg which is a 33 percent decrease in the overall price if you were to somehow able to completely ignore buy limits and timing this perfectly someone freshly going from 62 to 99 herbalor would save about 17.1 million just on the spider eggs alone if we zoom this out to the year, the variance is even greater, and the graphs are like this for every single bottable item in the game. Essentially, bot farms make all of our buyable skills less expensive and gives our endgame content a higher return on investment due to lower price consumables. Higher bossing return on investment is the other positive that I can think of. Since there are so many factors at play with brew and restore prices, I actually found it really hard to get a visual for this. I had the GE tracker graphs for it, uh, but they're kind of confusing. They don't really portray what I'm trying to show here. Uh, they explode for next, they explode for TOA. So here we are on the wiki page for the most profitable boss on the money making list, next. <coughs> According to the wiki, the raw GP per hour averaged out should be about 13.5 mil with the supply cost looking at about 1 mil. If we just took the red spider egg example of a 30, 33% discount or so on the eggs, you'd be saving about 300k an hour on average. Multiply that out by the 100 hours that you're going to be stuck at next, you're looking at about 30 mil in savings over the course of this. And those are pretty conservative compared to the GE tracker graphs that I was looking at, where it's actually a 50 to 60% variance. That's some serious change. All of these free resources are coming into the game, making prices lower on our consumables. Who is really being hurt? And the answer is early to mid game players. I know it can be a bit of an end game elita sometimes, but let's consider this. Botting has moved beyond the simple collecting of resources for some time now. At first, there was the infamous green dragon bot. Now there are Zora bots, corrupted gauntlet bots, and borderline invincible LMS bots. Here's an extremely long term graph for the price of dragon bones. Killing green dragons was like the OG moneymaker for us noobs back in the original RuneScape. Looking at the GE tracker, we have an overall. One sec, let me scroll down on this. Uh, we have an overall high of 3,192 and an overall low price on Dragon Bones for 1,324. This is going to make an early game player who's looking for a moneymaker roughly a third of what it once did. 
while the prayer trainers get their cheap EXP and the bot farmers cash in for real life dollars. I'll do just one more because I could literally go on all day with these. Let's look at Zora scales. Let's ignore the end. TOA did some crazy things to the economy. Uh, a lot of the graphs are like this for people like hoarding stuff right before the TOA lease through a release and then it just dives off a cliff. We got a high price of 293 and then a low price here of 82. 82. Who's going to want to spend their time to learn Zora for fucking tiddlywinks? This one's gonna go on to discourage mid-game players from doing this content for sure. There's way too many bots to even go through all of the different bot farms right now. I think the most offensive one to me, uh, personally, is the Corrupted Gauntlet bots. It took me 50 deaths before I got my first Corrupted Gauntlet, Casey. It's one of the hardest solo experiences in the entire game, and they have bots that just farm it 24-7. Don't even get me started on LMS bots. They're completely ruining the minigame. I've been focusing mostly just on conventional gold farming bots, but there's an even bigger issue with bots that aren't actually engaging with the content in RuneScape. When you walk into the GE, your chat is instantly flooded with spam bots of every type. This looks super trashy, it doesn't allow anybody to have a conversation, and it is an instant turnoff for any new players that see this. Furthermore, the sites and services that these bots advertise are completely focused on stealing the in-game wealth of naive players who generally tend to be on the newer side. Whether it's gold sites, inferno cape sellers, or the fake YouTube search page scam, these are all focused on gaining access to user accounts and stealing their wealth for in-game profit. Many of the players who get scammed for their banks this way end up quitting entirely, never to return to the game. Gambling bots are running rampant as well. Doesn't look like this world really has any, but I could hop through and find you some if I really needed to. They're sucking in new players and gambling addicts alike. These bots, they don't have fixed odds. They're guaranteed to scam you if you gamble a high enough amount of money. As we saw with the Duel Arena, even if people don't quit logging into RuneScape after gambling, once they're addicted, they generally stop playing the actual game. I've seen and lost too many friends who have gone down this road. The last and probably the least common bot that I did want to highlight is greatly affecting the end game players. If you're endgame and you have a decent enough bank, you might have been targeted by these before. A few YouTubers have done videos on them and they seem pretty uncommon or I'm on their do not try list, but I am talking about the Scott Scout bots. I stood out at the GE with a few billion GP on me, and it took about 40 minutes for me to get targeted. They basically scan the GE for players wearing high value items, post their information to a Discord, and from this, scammers will log in and attempt to gain your trust, befriend you, raid with you, and eventually they're going to lure you into PvP and take all of your gold. All in all, a pretty shitty experience to get backstabbed by your friend and lose your bank. Do I enjoy cheap resources when I'm maxing my skills or when I'm buying bulk potions for the next round of raiding? Of course I do. It's sick as hell. Super thankful to the bots for that, but does it outweigh the negative gameplay experience of our early game friends? No, I don't think it does. We need these players for the health and longevity of the game, and RuneScape won't be here without them. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below, and I will catch you next time.